Beware the man with one gun. He can probably use it, said American shooting legend Jeff Cooper. The problem for Browning shooter Dan Thor is that he has two guns. Dan is out on the pigeons near his home in Hertfordshire. It's a lovely spring day, the birds are decoying well and he's shooting a stunning Browning 525 exquisite that the people at Browning sent him to try. He ought to be in his element, but there's a problem. He keeps missing birds he would normally hit with his trusty Maruku. There we go, you see? Damn fork on it, a barn door. There we go. <laughs> Don't give up. I missed it with the first shot, got it with a second. I'm going through some shells today, mate, aren't I? Well, we've got four anyway, four. Don't even look at the shot ratio on the floor at the moment. <laughs> it's really embarrassing. At least we're getting some shooting. There are lots of pigeons in the area. Recently, they've been difficult to decoy. We've got plenty of pigeons around at the moment. I mean, there's thousands of you seen on my Instagram and people message me every day saying, you've got so many pigeons, why are you not shooting them? But the fact is you can't shoot them. They're, they're unshootable at the moment. Soon, soon you get on one field, they're moving on to the next. We've got ash buds coming out, we've got loosen, we've got rape, we've got clover. There's, there's so much variety of food around. They're not actually stuck onto one variety. They're, they're, they're taking a mix and it's a bit like a pick and mix in a shop. You know, there's so much to choose from. That's what they're doing at the precise moment. And anything that lands, everything else in the air is just following in. So I've got a couple of friends out today on the fields around us. So once they come out, hopefully it could start pushing the birds around. We might get a few shots. Like I say, it's, um, it's not a promise. We can just see what we can do. <laughs> We've set up in this field of lucerne, which seems to be the pigeon's number one choice at the moment. Coming into late February, it'll start chitting again. Um, and it, it comes really sweet and high in protein. So, um, yeah, once they get a taste for it, they're locked onto it. But like I say, to shoot the, the pigeons, it's very difficult because we, got the, we used to, years ago, it used to be only our farm that used to grow the lucerne. So everything in the area should just come here and you can shoot bags of 100 every time. But now our boss has decided to... Um, use different farms and plant loosen all over. The birds can go from one field to another to another, so it's, it's a bit difficult at the moment to shoot. So why is Dan struggling to hit the pigeons? The ah. birds aren't easy. A lot of them are coming in from behind, turning fast and swooping down into the pattern. Even so, Dan's a good shot. He should be hitting ah. more. It's a beautiful gun, don't get me wrong, it's absolutely beautiful, it really is. It's a little 525 Brown Exquisite. Um, like I say, everyone loves it when they see it. If we go out and, and friends of mine want to borrow a gun, I'll, I'll let them borrow it and while they're in the hide with me and they love it, they all get on with it really well. So I just wish it was a little bit longer and a little bit higher in the cone like, and it'd be, it'd be perfect for me. But I usually like my stocks about 16 inches. But yeah, a little bit longer, a little bit higher in the cone. If it's an adjustable stock, it may be fine. But at the precise moment, every time I'm mounting the gun, I'm looking down the right hand side. So yeah, so it's nice and empty as we can see. I don't like pointing guns at people, but as you can see, as I point the gun, I am straight down this right-hand side. So everything I shoot at, I'm probably a million miles away, but if I then roll my head up off of the stock, which is quite uncomfortable, I seem to be plumb on. So yeah, we're having to do that today, which isn't great fun, but we're having a few shots, which it's all about, and we're getting a few down, so we can't complain. Yeah. If I hit everything, I wouldn't want to do this ever. <laughs> I'll be bored of it. Missing. All hitting, I'm still out to enjoy myself. A lull gives Dan a chance to pick up the shot birds and tidy the pattern. Back in the hide, it's time for a spot of lunch. Um, homemade chicken. So it's uh, got a lot of chilli in there because at the moment, I've got to tell you, James, I've got a bit of a cold. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I can't taste nothing except for something that's really hot. So, um, yeah, it's burning my mouth. I get a slight taste of it, but a little bit of granary bread. So, you know, all this missing is making me hungry. <laughs> Here comes a couple more now. Get the sandwiches out and they keep coming. Can't seem to finish it. Ah, oh, shut the side of it. We've got one. Yeah, we've got one. One's better than none. <laughs> Today, Dan is decked out from head to toe in clothing from Jack Pike. That's perfect there, stuff for, for pigeon shooting and just ordinary day work, to be honest. Yeah, that's no, lovely gear. Got the new, um, the Gilly Hyde now there as well, which a lot of people have bought, I've seen on YouTube and stuff. And 
it's perfect. When you look from outside, there's no glare on it and gives you a nice bit of cover. And the good thing about it, it's got a top clear net. So, you, you know, the top part of your hide, you can just sit behind and look through. Yeah. So, which isn't too bad. So, um, yeah. yeah, you can't moan. All from wellies, trousers, tops and t-shirts, the whole lot. After his earlier misses, Dan is consciously altering his mount so the gun shoots where he aims. It takes some getting used to, but it seems to be working. The ones that come from behind, I think I ain't got to worry about nothing. I'm just picking a gun up and, and I'm fine, but wait for them birds in front. I'm, I can see my mount and I'm trying to walk it while it's coming towards me, but fingers crossed I'm shooting right now. This one's coming a little bit ahead. This one's going to turn back on us, hopefully. Coming over the top. I'm having to aim a lot lower than what, I, what I'm thinking. I'm having to shoot a foot below them to kill them, to actually get on them. Because yeah. it ain't coming up right, I'm having to shoot right underneath them pigeons. Yeah, seems to be working all right now, mate. We're, um, we're actually doing better than I thought, honestly. Like, we're, like I said to you at the start of the day, a lot of people see thousands of pigeons on the field and expect to come in and shoot to a 300, but it's not always the way. It really isn't, and I guarantee if we didn't have my mate out to have other, other field, we'd, we wouldn't have shot nowhere near what we're on at the moment. Nothing will come in there, you watch. The first left and right of the day. Lovely yeah, job, man. lovely job. Hooray. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> that did turn a bit quick, that one. <laughs> Bloody hell. That was a bit quick, that one. Here comes another one already. We're getting the hang of this pigeon shooting thing now, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I always use steel when I'm shooting pigeons because, um, you know, if, if people don't want them for food consumption, I can give them all to my mate who's got falcons, so I shoot them still so he can take them off my hands and nothing ever goes to waste. Otherwise, if everything did go to waste, I wouldn't be shooting. Cameraman James has to leave, so Dan has a count up. He's planning to keep on shooting for another two or three hours. Yeah, 31 so far. Yeah. 30, we've got 31 on the deck. We've got a couple up the hedge line there, and there's a couple in the wood, which I'm going to come back to later on once I pick Desi up. But um, like I say, I, I did expect us to be shooting this amount, just because we see uh, yesterday a good thousand or so, if not more, in this field. I wasn't expecting it to be a mega day, but we're quite lucky. I've got my mate Bernie out, which is on the other field there. He's on about 40 now, which is great. So, um, yeah, I hear you've got to go for a nice shoot meal, mate. Not jealous at all, but, um, yeah, I'm probably going to carry on there for another hour, a couple of hours. Just uh, go to the end of the evening, I guess, and hopefully get a few more. The moral of the story is it doesn't matter how pretty your gun is, it needs to fit you if you're going to shoot well with it. For more about Browning guns, go to browning.eu. And for Jack Pike clothing, see jackpike.co.uk.